Welcome into the PHNX Rising Why do you do this? Pod- what do you mean? I can't say, I can't be excited. I can't even finish the word PHNX Rising podcast without some sort of flack from this guy. May I finish? May I finish? Go, go for it. Why not? I don't need yeah. your opinion. I'm going to finish anyway. Welcome into the PHNX Rising podcast. We are presented to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook. I am Max Simpson. I am with Owen Evans, and we are back in studio. If you are not watching in video format, if you are on podcast, if you're consuming through your ears, not your eyeballs, that's where we're at. We're excited to be here. How are you, sir? I feel like I've just had an overload of like, I don't know, Max. The, the energy that you're bringing is... I can't. I can be excited. Can't be, can't, I can't just be happy. <laughs> you want me to be happy? My man had far too much cheese out of the fridge earlier and it's starting to rub off, but hey. It's good, it's good let's cheese. Let's go, let's it's go. Let's spaghetti in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hey, we, speaking of, no, I don't even know how to transition. I'm trying, I mean, I'm already in transition mode, but we do have a lot of stuff to talk about today. I know you were at a couple uh, different conferences, a couple email, a couple uh, press conferences, and a couple interviews, talking to Juan Guerra, talking to some of the players, really getting a pulse of it. But we said last week when we ran through the entire roster, really feels like things are coming together even sooner and the season's really around the corner. I thought it was, it felt that way last week. Now really hearing directly from some of the guys, I mean, man, that feeling just gets more and more intensified. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first preseason game is tomorrow. Yeah, that's... So let us bring switch back down in uh, Tucson. That game not word. open. We won't be there, but it will be, it will be happening. Yeah, I love that. Well, hey, I mean, let's let's get right into it, right? You had a uh, you had a chance to chat with Mr. Juan Guerra. You know, let's hear a bit what he said from the first week of training. It's been a good week. We've thrown um, a lot of information at them, and um, I think they've been um, absorbing um, the information that we've been giving them very well. We got the opportunity to finish last week with uh, with 35 minutes of, of rhythm, of playing time with an inner squad in where we wanted to see if if they were absorbing as much information as we wanted and in the, the way that we wanted to. And it was good, man. It was good. The first week, it's all been about um, identity, about who, who we are, how we want to do things, how we want to play, and then obviously into you know what I mean, game model and, and style of play. So, so far, so good. Love that. I mean, you you were there. What was your initial thoughts from his take from what he said, his takeaway? Well, I mean, even the whole look, we're talking about the whole setting of training right now down there. It's a bit busy uh, down at Wild Horse Pass in in some slightly odd circumstances, of course. Being down there, there's no stadium. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fields are... uh, a very interesting color they're starting to turn because the the grass for very obvious reasons isn't being kept that well anymore Mm -hmm. um and it was also incredibly busy because who else was training down there sporting kansas city were also training down in uh wild horse pass so it it, it was an interesting one i think that the team as a whole seemed to be coming together quite a bit there was a when i first got down there they were all kind of huddled around one area and talking to each other um Feels as though, look, it, it felt like a reasonably positive vibe down there. You know, I mean, it's early days, of course, but um, again, there's, on, there's only so much you can get out of some of these preseason kind of sessions. Is we, we got to see a little bit of, I mean, what was mostly stretching down there while we were there. But um, again, look, a lot of new faces, a lot of people that we're going to have to start getting used to seeing because there's been so much transition, so much turnover in this squad that. It just looks a lot different to what it used to last time. I, I think I, I remarked to someone else who was showing up there that it was like, this is the first time in quite some time that I felt like I'm I'm showing up to a, a rising event and probably knowing less people there than that I don't know. It's coming a lot coming from this guy. But no, in all seriousness, I think it's a really interesting, unique time this time around because not only do you, you know, like we kept on saying, it's Juan's first full season in charge. You have so many different players. And something like these press conferences, I mean, I'm curious to hear your thoughts of how much, you know, how much, you know, I know people are going to maybe be a bit, um, you know, it's a balance of being guarded, but also giving, you know, really thoughtful information to the press. And it's really interesting because I, I think normally people might throw things away, especially this early on the season. But I really think everything that coach is saying, that players are saying, really can speak volumes of what we're 
you know, not seeing behind the scenes because everyone is so young. There is a lot of chemistry that's still needing to form this early on in the season. And um, it, it's just kind of interesting to see the dynamic of what plays off with these different answers. Um, I mean, I'm curious, do you put a lot of stock into the, you know, what, what the things are saying or is it still a bit close to the chest? Curious. It varies kind of answer by answer. Mm -hmm. Some of them you get something that's more... Yes, I fully believe that what's being said is mm -hmm. there's no real thought going into spinning this in any way. Of course, other times you always have to bear in mind, look, it's not even just about keeping things close to the chest in terms of not wanting to tell us things. Certain things, as I'm sure we'll get into later when we're talking about you know, what's going on with the captaincy, uh, do you want that out there? Do you want to be giving that message to your players? Mm -hmm. And then it can become, of course, the issue that when you speak to the media, you're not just speaking to your fan base, you are also to an extent, speaking to your own players, the mm. message that you give out is the message that they're going to hear as well when you're speaking publicly. Definitely. So I think it's a, it's definitely a, a mix of things there. I feel as though, look, Juan says a lot of the right things. He said a lot of the right things, I think, since he's arrived. Mm -hmm. um, there was definitely a move towards implementing some of that last year. Now, though, the excuses are gone. Um, this is not a squad that he has inherited. I mean, look, it came from the press conference today. He said he had a lot of respect for a lot of the guys they had here last year, that mm. he came in and and the, it, it was just very different to what they had been doing previously. He knew that that was risky, and yet he saw the boys going out there and despite things changing quite abruptly halfway through the season, really putting their all into trying to enact that change. And mm. so, yeah, it's... This, yeah, I, I, I just feel as though now what we're going to see is we're moving away from the time whereby those kind of excuses of the difficulty, yeah, uh, are going. Um, the team obviously will take a little bit of time to gel here at the start of the preseason and into the season. But yeah, what we're going to see now is does Juan Guerra's style on the field ultimately replicate what he talks it up in the press conferences? No, one hundred percent. And the thing that I you know, stre stressed on show the show two weeks ago, last week. It takes time. This is an absolute overall of a culture shift from the front office down to the last signing. It really is. There's so many new phases. It's unrealistic for things like this to happen overnight. It really does take its time and patience. And I think that's reflected, you know, not only in what, what Juan's saying, but also in what other players are saying. I mean, you had a chance as well to hear from Eddie Man Manjoma. And, you know, I'm curious, we have the video that will pop up, but um, we'll listen to that first, then want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, just a cohesion within the group. Um, everybody from top to bottom, ownership, uh, staff, coaching staff themselves, but also staff in the front office. And then obviously the players. Um, everybody has to be together in order for us to reach a common goal. So, like I said, yeah, very, very, very clear from day one. So more of an ideological philosophy rather than, like, tactical? Um, I mean, I would say, it honestly, is a little bit of both because the cohesion obviously has to contribute to the tactical piece as well on the field. Um, so, yeah, I would say it contributes to pretty much all aspects. Having a cohesion, having a bond with each other, I think that's one of the most important things. It's almost like I kind of stole pretty much what he said. You know, it starts from the front office, goes down to the coaches, goes down to the players. But, I mean, no, he, he, he speaks to the bond and everything going on. I mean, I, I put a lot of stock into that. But, again, want to hear your thoughts. You were there. What... You know, you, it's one thing to hear from a manager. How does it feel coming from a player and a new player at that? Yeah, it's something that came up quite a bit between both Eddie and from, from Juan as well, in that one of the biggest keys going into this season is going to be getting that cohesiveness together. It's about creating what both of them described as almost like a family-like atmosphere off the field. Mm -hmm. And we know what part of the plan behind that is. We know that they're going to be going to Mexico, of course, for a week. They're going to be spending a lot of time together as a result. And a lot of that is about building those kind of connections. The idea that if you have them all trapped in one place, as opposed to being here in, in Arizona, where, as, as Juan put it, look, it's hard to leave here because it's the weather's lovely. The MLS teams are all hanging around here. You want to be around here. You want to be around all of that. And yet at the same time, when they train here, they then go home after training and yeah, they might interact with their teammates, mm -hmm. but they might not. And that, that's almost the biggest problem. You don't know what they're doing outside of their time 
with each other on the training ground. When you travel away for a week, what you do is you create that kind of controlled environment. It's something that Rick always described as well. It can be easier sometimes to control the environment when you're on the road just because they're with you somewhat all of the time. Yep. They're not going home and doing whatever they, they get up to when they go home. They're all together. They're all part of the big group there. And it, it does, I think, build into kind of the cohesiveness. Now, I do think there's another positive in that normally we'd point at the start of a season and say two road games. Ugh. Mm -hmm. However, I think, again, that has the potential for good squad building, potentially, you know, really helping those connections to be formed between players there and and really forging the bonds on the squad but ultimately look i i think that it's it's going to be a challenge um of course a lot of these guys have things in common um there's going to be a lot more spanish spoken on the the training field i feel than we've seen in the past mm -hmm. um but of course you know when you're bringing a lot of new guys in having things like a common shared language is a good thing. Um, you want to have that kind of connection between players coming in. So, look, again, there, there's a lot of things that could be helpful. We're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, it's hard It's hard to judge, isn't it? It's hard yeah. to, to tell at this stage in the year what exactly is going to go on when it comes to how are the personalities going to mesh together? Is everyone going to be okay? And sometimes those things are hard to tell until you even get into the the really hard part of actually having to play real games where yeah. things matter. Oh, yeah. Because that's when you start to see the personalities. Who's the person who's going to start blaming others? Who's the person who... No, but you, you know what I'm saying oh, here. Sure. It's, it's true. It's, it's a challenge when you see teams face adversity. That's when you start to, to get those relationships potentially fracture a little bit. And you, and you really understand then just how strong those relationships have been built. It is. And if we're really getting to like the, the psychoanalytical part of this, I mean, you have two different phases, right? You have a group of players who are holdovers from last season who, you know, the coaching staff is evaluating that, hey, these are guys who maybe we did not bring in, but they are worthy of what, you know, they're, they're, they deserve a look on this team for what we're looking to build. They fit into our system. And then you have a whole other group of guys, whether they you know have ties to Juan at former clubs, whether they have ties from the national aspect, whether they have ties from just they have symmetry within the USL. They have a whole group of guys who have come in who are new and they're competing for those spots. And it's really interesting where you have those two different groups of players and it's natural to think, hey, there's some conflict here. They might rub up against each other. That's a natural part of the team. But I think that's something that we often overlook when we're in this phase of preseason, when we're in this phase of roster building as the regular season nears. And especially with a coaching staff where it's in its first full season, all of this is magnified. So it's really telling to hear from who we heard from in the um, interviews, because I think that just drives the point home that it's going to take a while, and it really is a full-team effort. Indeed, indeed. Again, there's a reason that it came up. It's seemingly every other answer, to be honest, that they really, in some way, shape, or form, need to work out how they're all going to come together. They're all going to understand what it means to be part of Phoenix Rising and to be playing alongside each other. And as, as Eddie said at one point about, you know, going to war alongside your brothers and... Uh, that was kind of the vision that, that Juan sold him on when he first came to, to join the club was this idea that, look, it's going to be like a family. Everyone will be, you know, all behind this one cause. And it takes a little bit of time to realize that. Now, again, one week of preseason down, a little bit early to know quite how well that's going. There's a lot of preseason left, and and not just that, of course, there's a first couple of weeks of the season as well. No, 100%. I think, as we say, there's a lot that can be going on behind the scenes. And I love the trips. I love the roster building. I love the cohesion. I think I saw on Twitter, like they're all, you know, it's, you have it through a social media lens, but it's always really cool to see, hey, team bonding. They're going to, I think it was like an escape room. They're doing um, different things off field. And it's like, it's cheesy, but I, I like, I love that stuff. But honestly, it's that little, those little things that make the difference, but nothing really replicates like that real game action, doing things real in the moment. And if you want to look at games real time in the moment, then you can check out our friends at the DraftKings Sportsbook. How do you like that? For a transition, my friend. Well, hey, if you want to take a couple juicy bets, by the way, I told you guys, I want to make this very clear to everyone. Everyone gave me such a hard time on last week's show. 
Oh, don't take Spurs over Man City. Oh no, oh no. And what did I tell you? You lost money if you didn't take the bet. Shame, shame, shame on you. I get my picks right 60% of the time. I get them right 100% of the time. This is that 60%. We have some juicy games. I'm going to throw off one of you. You know, Man United and Leeds. Leeds just sacked their manager, Jesse Marsh. They're away to Man You got plus 550 for them to win tomorrow. Pretty interesting game. And then I know our producer, Mr. Damon, over there in the hot seat. West Ham and Chelsea. West Ham plus 230 to win, plus 230 to draw, and plus 125 for Chelsea to win. Anyone, gentlemen, any of those games, any of them speak to us. You know, I, I feel as though this is, this is where I'm going to... Michael in the in the chat is going to be actually happy at this one. <laughs> for once, it's not me joking about Man United. It's not me saying, <laughs> if you bet on Man United, you're going to lose money. I, I feel yeah. as though... I, I hear you read the odds for Leeds. I, I don't necessarily see them bouncing back tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they get a draw. Maybe Man United can't actually pull off the win, but I, I really struggle to see Leeds United picking up a win in that game. Mm. Okay. Any, any, Damien, any thoughts on Chelsea? I think Chelsea should win because West Ham are in 17th place. It's not good. 16th place, something, something like that on the good. table. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, Chelsea should win. I'd look at the draw no bet odds on DraftKings mm, Sportsbook like that. and see what those are at. And I might try to parlay it with something else. Mm. Maybe try to get close to even odds Ooh, on something. A cultured betting man. We like this. We like this. Well, and if you, by the way, if you want like free money and I'm talking no promo code, no nothing, throw some money on Tottenham against Leicester plus 110 to win against them. Leicester is how you say garbage. Tottenham is riding hot. We didn't even have Antonio Conte. We, you know, won one for the gaffer. So, Beautiful, love to see it, win some money. And hey, if you would like some free money, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use promo code PHNX. New customers can bet $5 on the Super Bowl, different type of football, Super Bowl 57, get $200 in bonus bets instantly only at the DraftKings Sportsbook app with the code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And... While you are watching Super Bowl, or well, hold on, we a little ASMR for you. Oh, ooh! I thought you were about to tip something over. Then, mm. Mac. like, how many of those have you had? I thought you were about to tip something over. I mean, everyone, we, remember, please drink responsibly. Please drink responsibly. That that actually is in the copy. Um, no, if you are enjoying the big game or any EPL or anything like that, make sure it's a Four Peaks beverage. They got the tastiest stuff. Yes, we. I do want to see people sounding off in the chat. You see uh, Owen here has two cans. I have two bottles. I'm personally indifferent, but I'm curious what you think. Are you bottles or cans? Bottles or cans? I mean, draft's a whole other discussion. I think that's the easy winner. But please, bottles or cans, let us know. Sound off in the chat. Do it now. Thank you. And while we're talking about Four Peaks, if you haven't had a chance to try Arizona's number one wheat ale, the Wow Wheat, this man has two of them. He's clearly tried it. Then come on down to Old Town at Boondocks for the Tailgate Time Machine Saturday. We're going back in time, apparently. On February 11th, this Saturday, February 11th, try their newest innovation. It's packed full of Arizona citrus flavor, perfect for light drinking in the desert sun. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. It's like 70 degrees. Go on down, Boondocks, Bocce, February 11th. Do it now. And please drink responsibly. But do it on February 11th, well, yeah, not do now. It, well, I mean, enjoy responsibly now. Do that on February 11th on Saturday. Clearly, people understand what I'm saying. Anyway, Guy, listen, we've had some big news, not just today, but we actually had a signing happen right after our last show. So two pieces of housekeeping that we'd like to address. First off, from a signing perspective, we have Emil Huelo. Joining the team from Sacramento Republic. Um, interesting player. I mean, in the in the highlight that the team put together, I mean, gosh, this guy has some nice dribbling. And yes, I think I saw it earlier in the comments, something related to my energy and the influx of midfielders that we have. We added another midi. Gotta love it. I mean, this guy able to dribble through, really nice touch. I think he's going to progress the ball well. And... Link up play. I mean, it's a trait that we've seen time and time again from this offseason. Any additional insight on your end? I think he's a player who, I mean, I mean, you look at what he's done and there's a reason that he was drafted in the first place. Um, 
I, I think that as a player, look, do I look at Emil Coelho and necessarily say that on a title-winning team, he's a starter? Not necessarily. Um, but no team is made up of just their starters. I think yep. that he is a fantastic acquisition in terms of someone who can make an impact in the midfield. Yep. Um, I, I think that if you've got guys like that on your bench, you're doing well. Mm-hmm. You're doing very well for yourself. It's the kind of depth that you need in a long, hard season like we see in USL, whereby there's so much travel, there's games come thick and fast at some points in the season. Um, I, I feel as though he's a very good depth option that really provides this team with someone that will be a little bit more effective off the bench maybe mm-hmm. than some of the options were last year. And I, and I think that's the part that we have a lot of midfielders. I understand where people are coming from. I think it's something where we were crying out for attacking midfielders to even come off the bench, give them a spark. Even if you go with your preferred guy every single time, they're not always going to make the difference. Maybe it's an off day. Maybe they're just not feeling it. Maybe it's an opponent matchup, whatever. You need depth who can come off the bench in the 50th, 60th, 70th, 80th minute, whatever it is, and make a difference. There is no such thing. There's no bad thing as too many options especially in midfield where that's probably going to be where you're seeing the most turnover you're not always subbing out your forwards you're not always subbing out your defenders you're going to see a lot of the influx in the midfield so i personally like this you know he chipped in um in the regular season last year six goals 10 assists over excuse me 58 appearances during his time in three seasons um you know during the last campaign 22 appearances for sac republic two goals two assists over a thousand minutes of action i mean he he seems like he's battle tested and I mean, just, again, just watching his highlights, he can move maneuver well in tight spaces. I'm really curious to see him. And he just adds another dynamic force to our midfield. But that is... I'll take one, oh, yes, one little please. interruption there before we move on. Just shout out to Michael in the chat who's keeping up his anti-Manuel Arteaga like, crusade at the moment by saying that Rising needs another striker here. I, I mean, Michael, we know where your cards lie. We know how you feel about... Manuel Arteaga, it's it's okay, it's okay. We get a we get a little uh, thumbs okay. down there as well pops up as soon as I start mentioning the name. But uh, we we move we move from tough. There. Turn that turn that. Well, I can't turn that frown upside down. Turn that thumb upside down. Listen, I get it. It's fair. I think we need another another striker. Would not hurt regardless. But uh, again, give it time. I, I'd agree. Time. Again, depth. But remember, okay, before we move too deep into this, you have to remember that something that Juan Guerra kept bringing up and we'll touch on this more later was the fact that there'd be a 25 man squad in his mind we're at 22 at the moment so chill time yeah time. you're the man we're not even at our speaking of number 22 nice we're not our, we're not even on our g's yet by the way i'm at michael don't pretend that there's not no <laughs> anti- 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 <laughs> we see right agenda. through it. we see your agenda michael yes. we see through your messages to the chat well, we know exactly what you're on here we know exactly the agenda yes sir well that is a nice tee up um for the New signing announced today, Mr. Carlos Harvey from LA Galaxy. Dos, very, very cool. I mean, I I enjoyed the highlight video again of this guy. And again, with everything, unless you're really uh, boiling down in the tape, the highlight package only shows so much. But it's again, we keep on seeing consistency with all the players being brought in. If it's midfield, there's just guys who creative off the ball, who can dribble well. If it's forwards, guys that seem decisive, I'm not even going back to Mike because that just teed him up for something. But on the defense, the thing that we keep on seeing is it is guys who are aggressive in stepping. And my word, I mean, listen, based off here, the highlight tape, this seems like a guy who might pick up a couple of yellow cards because he's putting in foots. He's going in challenges hard. But I mean, again, I like we have another defender who is high stepping, going to the ball and just being aggressive. He's not letting the guys turn. He's really playing on the front foot. Something that, again, when you have a new goalkeeper in the mix, still not sure who that will be, really helps to have a solid back line. Well, on the goalkeeper, the indication was, look, it's still up to them, those guys, what what they want to do, what they do this preseason. But um, look, to to the comments on Harvey, um, I mean, to be clear here, for anyone who is still thinking about the Dom Dwyer, clearly what has happened is someone has mistaken Carlos Harvey in a picture for Dom Dwyer. And... um, that happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Carlos Harvey's come in. I, I, I like him. You, you mentioned about his defensive abilities. I like that about him, mostly because this is a guy who comes in build as a midfielder, a defensive mm-hmm. midfielder, but he's someone who does have the ability to slot, uh, slot in at centre-back if needed. And 
that is an area that we identified where it was, eh, there's no, maybe not enough depth, especially if we see them come out again next season playing with those three center backs like we did last year. And, and then in that kind of formation, they need a little bit more depth wise. But look, I'm, I'm relatively happy to see this as an acquisition. I feel as though, again, it's another player who can bring depth to the squad who gives options. I mean, he's a Panamanian international. That's got to count for something, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's 23 years old, still a lot of room to grow. Joins from LA Galaxy on a uh, permanent deal for an undisclosed fee, which is the first time we've had it referenced, I believe, that Rising have paid a fee for someone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do recall last year, about a year ago, you know, it was referenced to a fee and it was, well, if we paid a fee for someone, it could be the first. I mean, it's possible as well that Claudio Repetto also had a fee paid. I'm not entirely certain on that one, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but there's not many, not many times that we see Rising actually go into the market and admit that they're paying a fee for a player to come in. So, hey, it's it's interesting. Clearly, there's appeal there that Juan is really interested in. Um, unfortunately, of course... While the news was trickling through about Carlos at that time, it wasn't official, so we didn't get any quotes from the press conference today about the fact that Carlos Harvey had, uh, has, uh, has been signed. We didn't hear from Juan about that mm -hmm. one, but I'm sure we'll hear more from him probably on the weekend. For sure. And what, for what's worth, we do see in the press release, it did say Carlos fits with our, this coming from Coach Juan Guerra, Carlos fits with our style of play. His experience in the MLS, USL Championship, and at the international level makes him a great addition to our squad. His versatility, quality on the ball, and athleticism will allow us to use him in different roles within our game model. I mean, listen, that just talks to the versatility. Again, you hope to carve out a very consistent system and formation in place, but it always helps to, hey, we saw this team at times, need to go to plan B, maybe a bit more aggressive, maybe a bit more defensive. Love a guy who, the coach is already saying, kind of fit to those different models. And every, again, with all the signings coming in, it's a lot of fluidity. You know, we know d different position groups, but there are a lot of guys who, you know, maybe it's a bit more inside, maybe it's a bit more out wide, maybe it's a bit of a center back, maybe it's a bit more of an outside back. It's a lot of tweeners in a way in a position group, so I like that there's a lot of versatility within multiple guys coming in. With noting as well on the positioning, that actually, I was something that um, Eddie Mungerman was asked today was about how, look, you know, he obviously he's a right back, more of a right back at least, and there are a few guys who can play in that kind of position. Had there been any conversation about what kind to expect positionally this year? And he said that no, not as of yet. There's been no real uh, indications so far as to, to what the expectation is positionally and and how they're going to battle it out in that way so it's more just at this point but you know pushing on the philosophy and the, those kind of things working on team building making sure that they're playing in the the general style of play that phoenix rising want them to be putting out there but you know we were speaking about additions let's let's hop on down actually to uh we've got another video actually here because Absolutely. as i as i hinted at earlier juan's been saying that look he's trying to bring in a 25 man squad we only had 22 players announced so far. So what's the kind of plan going forward from here? Let's have a listen to what he had to say. We're close. We're very close. Um, so you guys notice you probably don't see a lot of try list. Um, we truly believe in, in developing um, and, and, and growing our academy and, and the system and, and the pyramid of, of um, the youth and the academy of what Phoenix Rising is. And this is something that we're going we're gonna to make sure that we protect and that we keep um, feeding and giving opportunity to our academy players that are excelling at their level to come in and be with the first team. Now, again, this is not a gift. Those kids that come in from the academy have to earn it, and um, that's what we want to do. As you saw today, we, we had a lot of academy guys. You're going to see um, a lot of academy guys tomorrow versus um, Colorado, and you'll see them constantly training. That um, at the end of the day, those I know I keep mentioning the 25-man roster, Ideally, we have to make sure that we keep providing a clear path from the academy to the first team. But it's a path that I'm making sure that when we bring in the guys, they're ready. Because if, if not, we're, we're not doing anything. We're not just checking a box over here. We have to make sure that we're developing, we're growing. And when we talk about the academy, it's not only the players. You saw a lot of academy staff here today and all last week since day one. So you're going to see a lot of numbers. You're going to see a lot of new faces of... Um, that we are Phoenix Rising, we are one organization, and we have to make sure that we utilize all the muscle that we have in order to either develop players, develop coaches, and at the end of the day, we're developing and growing our brand too. 
All right. Well, what do you make of that? I mean, it's in some ways not a surprise. I feel as though the bigger question, if you weren't going to be looking at the Academy um, as potential depth even, would be what's the point of the Academy? Um, yeah. We've seen them turn some in the past. And look, I feel as though there have been some talents that never really got an opportunity at this club. Um, there were people, I mean, we... I know the chat will enjoy this inevitably as we name drop, but let's get Blaze Hardy a shout out here. A guy who, <laughs> when he did actually get to feature against New Mexico, really, he, he looked every bit uh, as we'd kind of described him from the preseason games. He he looked confident. He definitely had the ability to take some of them on. Yeah. And he was a guy you wanted to actually see get given an opportunity to do something. Now, he didn't get given that opportunity. He's now gone off to college, of course. But there are a lot of players like that. I mean, even Niall Dunn, of course, came out of the academy. He missed last season because of injury. To be fair, it wasn't as though he just didn't have any part in it. He missed last season because of injury. But he's on a professional contract, and that, that came up. Is, are we going to see Niall Dunn being given more of an opportunity this year? Juan said, well, look, he, he's a professional. He's on a professional contract. It doesn't matter that he's, he's very, very young. Mm -hmm. He's on a professional contract. He has to fight for his place in that squad like any other player. Mm -hmm. And then if he wins it on the training ground, he he's going to be starting on match day um and that, that's it's up to him to work out if he can you know ultimately make it into the squad so look i, I feel as though it makes sense you want to into that and again i feel as if this squad is mostly rounded out i mm -hmm. do feel as though there's a lot of um stuff in there i mean i i personally as well again would like to see a couple of those academy players out there on the field we're just going to wait and see yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a case of it's too many, new, you know, a lot of new guys, not too many, but there's a lot of new guys coming in. You know, you heard from Juan himself, kind of his stance on he's looking for a particular type of player who doesn't just check the boxes. And that's not to say that that some of the, you know, any trialists or academy players don't just check a box or don't fit what he's looking for. But I can understand when if you are investing the time, the capital, the resources to go out and and find guys to bring in that maybe you're purposely devoting more of your attention to those players rather than, I mean, yeah, we already have them in our own, in our, in our own backyard, backyard Academy, but this is my time to really pull from the people I want. And that's kind of just been the overarching theme I've seen from really all the signings that we are. It's he's finding Juan Guerra guys. He wants to bring in the guys that know his system, know his playing style and know really the type of attributes that he embodies. So curious if that maybe changes down the road in regards to trialists and academy players, but we'll see. I mean, it's also worth noting that you've got the Barcelona Academy right down the road. Mm -hmm. um, something that Rising Barcelona. fans have always kind of poked at and said, why is it that other USL teams are signing players out here? We never give them a lock in. Yeah. Well, now's the opportunity, actually. If you're talking about youth players, look, you obviously you've got the pipeline from Rising's Youth Academy, but you've also got a pipeline building down there in the Barcelona Academy as well, Dan down uh, slightly further south of, of Phoenix. So, look, it, it's there's definitely opportunities here, I feel, for local youngsters or youngsters that are moved here to, to, to make their way into this team. And there's talent there. We know there's talent there. We always know there's talent there. Look, the number of guys that RSL have brought up the ranks, ultimately, mm -hmm. that, that have come from, from Arizona. Oh, you yeah. look at those guys. Why can't Phoenix Rising be bringing those players up? Yeah, and, and that's it, the point. No, and it, and it's it's tough too, right? When you've had you've had the Barcelona Academy, you've had the affiliation with an FC Tucson, where you have that you're you always like to see the homegrown guys being brought in. I mean, of course, you want the best players on the pitch, but I think rising, even though it's not maybe not their direct mission, it's in a way an asset to the community and trying to showcase that soccer is growing and thriving in Arizona. Is is it their mission to do it on? a local younger younger level earlier on, not necessarily. And they have bigger fish to fry at the first team level, but it shows that it really is reflective to the community when you're able to say, hey, we pulled from our guys, we brought from within, we're able to start at the very bottom of our academy system or from younger and bring them up. So again, that might be a longer term project. There is, I, I honestly don't blame Juan for not maybe going as much within the academy route purely because there's so much on his plate and so much transition. But I think that's something where over the years, especially with a coach who you hope has, you know, a bit of uh, time to develop his team from the top bottom, 
that there is a bit of, hey, we want to grow this long term from the academy. Yeah, not just that. I mean, he, he he spoke earlier about, you know, giving a message to the academy players that there is that pathway there. That's actually pretty big in one hand. I mean, I mentioned RSL's academy here. If you're going to compete with RSL's academy in Arizona, you've got to show that you're willing to mm -hmm. take chances on youth. You've got to show that there is a genuine pathway for them to come up through the academy and play for you. Because otherwise you won't get the youth, youth prospects here in Arizona. You just won't get them. You won't get them because they will go to RSL, which does have a track record oh. of promoting those players up and giving them a chance, you know, ultimately with Mo Monix, a, a tip Whoa. of can over there. Empty, thankfully. Um, even with Monix, we'll build, we'll build a table. Uh, uh, so we, we actually said it. a beer barge. A barge. A barge, you. apparently. Barge, I don't know what that means. Well. But... um. In, in this context, but, you know, they've got the, the evidence that they have brought players up, they take them to Monarchs, they give them a run in the team there. If they do well at Monarchs, they ultimately make it into the first team. They've got that pathway there. For Rising, it's felt as though that hasn't really been there. Yeah. Youth players and their actual involvement has been a little bit in preseason. Maybe they get invited to training once or yeah. twice. Um, Niall Dunn kind of shattered through that, but at the same time... It's not consistent. Didn't really do it it's, consistently. It, and then you had the bigger thing of, well, when a lot of the guys did get um, their chance in the in the team, it was because of what happened in New Mexico last year. Yeah. No, and, and I mean, even, even when people break through, there are other teams where it's just defining the narrative. The expectation with other clubs is when you see a guy come from the academy or come through the ranks, it's okay that system is in place, the expectation is they aren't going to fall flat, that they are going to rise to the challenge and be a difference in the team. If a rising player who co comes through the ranks, comes through the academy, whatever, there isn't that expectation at all. There, I don't know if it's necessarily negative, but it's certainly not positive. It's, okay, we don't really know about this guy, perhaps. Let's see what happens. Like other teams, it takes time to build that sort of reputation, but they have to start somewhere. I would like to see Rising start building towards that. And maybe more. it's harder. Maybe it's harder because, look, it, it's you're asking people to seriously commit to playing professional football in second tier here mm -hmm. is a harder sell when college is also an option for a lot of those players. Sure. Um, it's easier for an MLS team to say, look, leave college behind, mm -hmm. come to him professional, um, than it is for a second division team to for make sure. that because ultimately playing long term in the second division is a questionable career choice for some because it's not the best paying we know that and it's a very unstable environment if you don't make it early doors there's not a lot of room to drop down mm -hmm. and the main way that people would drop down is often by well you probably want to go to college wouldn't you but if you've played well of course you can sign a usl academy contract which allows you to maintain your eligibility as an, an amateur player um playing with a professional club mm -hmm. but it, it's you know, if you sign a professional contract, that's not the case. Right. You can't play in college then. So it's complicated. And I mean, uh, my just coming there about tell OC that. I feel it's though because OC in a lot of ways, and this is where there is a bit of a difference, OC is very well positioned itself just as a selling club. Mm. Um, they know their role in the ecosystem. They know what they do. They make a lot of money off it, to be fair to them. And I don't blame them for that whatsoever. Those kind of transfers are something that ultimately keeps clubs at this this kind of level alive um something that allows them to keep investing and do the the kind of community work that they do as well over in orange county but i feel as though if you're a phoenix rising fan you aspire to be a little bit more than what orange county do their model works for them um it could work here mm -hmm. but i'm not sure that it's quite the same I'm not sure it's quite the same yeah no and it's it's all it goes back to the ethos rising is very different from an oc who's different from a Sacramento, who's different from... I mean, for a, a, for a start, so the crowd different. aren't all children in, like, Orange County. As, as so, some would say, of course, <laughs> not me. But yes. Some would say. No, but there, there's all levels to this. It's all different. But speaking of levels, speaking of different, we did actually get a video that... We have talked we about... We don't have the video actually available to go here, unfortunately. That's, I'm okay, going to well, interrupt well, you Well, there thank slightly. you. Thank you. I was going to jump the gun on that one. But we don't need the video for it. You know, it's actually interesting. This is a conversation that we have had in the past um, about the captaincy. And this was really when, oh gosh, this was when there was other players on the roster where maybe there was more longer term faces. Now that this is going to the 2023 season, 
Darnell King is a holdover from the old regime. You know, a guy we talked about who, when he's on his day, valuable player, has done the captaincy role, does it, you know, does a solid job. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts and really see what this looks like with new players being brought in, with, you know, a smaller group of holdover players. How does that get sorted out? And where do we kind of go from here? It's interesting, isn't it? Because when when you look at the captaincy here, I... I'm intrigued who would take it over um, if not Darnell. And of course, I asked um, Juan about this today about, look, you know, are you going to let Darnell retain the captaincy? Um, and he said, well, look, it's not it's not me making a decision. The players have to fight for it. They earn it more than, than it mm-hmm. just being handed out. Um, I think that, of course, I understand why there is a desire on, yeah. on his part to say, look, we want to make sure that you know, we're ultimately rewarding the people who actually come and fight for it now. But at the same time, I'm not sure who the major alternatives are. Um, it feels odd to hand an armband to someone on their first season coming into a team. Um, it, it just does. Yeah. And there, I don't feel as though Kev is a viable alternative captain, despite everything that he's done for this team. And I wouldn't, I'm not using that to question him and his character in any way, shape, or form. I don't want people to read into that as though that's what I'm saying clip here. It. It's it. not. It's not. Okay. He's, que- he's, he's questioning his character. No, don't clip that, please. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> no, because I, I'm being serious. He's a really yeah. good guy. Yeah. He, he is a player that does give his all for this team. Absolutely. And he cares about it. There's a reason why when you actually look, they handed out a sheet today with the uh, roster so far. And it was... You look at it and you see, hang on a minute, the only person here, everyone is like 2010, 21, 22, 23 they signed. And then you've got Kev Lambert there, just 2017. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, talk about not just regimes. I mean, he, he's been there like he's since, since the darn beginning, man. Like since the yeah. glory, before he's, the glory he's the days. Only pa- he's the only player still on this squad, genuinely now, who has been on this squad longer than I've been covering the team. He's the only player left. That's a, that's a humble. I mean, that's that's a, that's a nice little so, not brag, but that's that's a nice shout. So to you. it says how long he has been here for so long. Look, I mean, you could give it to a first year player, Pat. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the question <sighs> comes down to though, and this is where mm. the issue is, right? The way that Juan gave it is that he, he's more maybe not looking for a singular captain. There will, of course, be a singular captain, but it sounded more like it was going to be like a a trio of leaders in the locker room, really, is who he's looking for. The question for me as to whether Darnell maintains the armband or not is what kind of on-field role does Juan Guerra envisage for Darnell King this year? If Darnell's not a starter, I understand why he may not have the armband. I do understand that. But if he is a starter, I'd be surprised to see someone else giving it over him. But that's the question. If he's not a starter, I get it. You you probably do have to find someone else, not least because you're going to have to have someone else wearing it for most of the time. No, I, I agree. That's pretty much where I'm at. If if he's a starter, I don't. I, I get what you're saying. Don't lock him in. You want guys to, to fight for it. But go with a guy who he has experience in the captaincy role. He has ties to some of the guys on the other team. I agree with what you were saying. Let me play devil's advocate and purely out of curiosity is... Devil's advocate never goes well. Come on. It's fair. But hear me out on this. I understand not giving it to a first-year guy because, well, they're not as retained as, some, as you know the guys who have been there. And Juan Guerra does have experience with the handful of holdovers from last season. My question, though, is there are a lot of new guys and... Maybe one of the guy again. If it's not Darnell, let's say for let's say Darnell's not a starter. He, you know, therefore he's not the captain. We need to find someone else. Let's just let's just pull it, put that out there in the universe. Not saying it's going to happen. Let's speculate. If he does and it's not him, do you did someone you think make an impression from last season? Because if we're not talking about no. you know Kev Lambert, then. By default, you're almost giving no, it to a first-year guy. Like, that's and the thing. There's no one else to give it, it to. It's a, it's a, it's it's a problem to have because in a lot of ways, you do have to remember, of course, that a captain isn't just, look, they, there's a role that they have in terms of, you know, obviously there's certain things they do on the field. Obviously, there is a role they have in terms of representing the locker room. There's a role that they have in terms of 
not just that, but representing the coaches to the, the players on times as well and being that go-between yeah. between the players on the one hand, the coaches on the other, and keeping the peace sometimes when there can be friction, as happens. It does, yeah. of course, in, in the case, course of a long season, right? It happens. You you rely on those leaders in the locker room on both sides to make sure that everyone is, is sure. getting on as well as they can and that they're, they're getting on in relative harmony. But the problem is there's an entire other side as well to the role of a captain. And that is that you are somewhat of an ambassador for the club. And that's something that just, again, I mean, they may not have an option. There may not be an option to not go with a first-year player. But personally, in a lot of ways, it, it, it feels like a rough move to do that because how can you truly be that ambassador for the club, ambassador to the fans, when you've never played out in front of those fans before, when you haven't been around and, and look, you can talk and uh, there's all the talk, of course, about instilling culture and all of that kind of stuff. And I understand that. But there's a difference and a big difference between instilling it and living it. Mm. I do Gabby like, Torres, that's maybe. An, that's maybe. An, that, that, I was going to say, that's kind of an I underrated can't say shout. that I know I like enough yeah. about the kind of stature that Gabby has within the locker room to know whether that yeah. would be a, a decent move or not in this case. But I, I suppose one of the only real bridges there that I, I'd understand that. I, I could see that being a move. There's a lot of what ifs to the scenario. There's a lot of time and a lot of things that need to happen. I'm not going to hold you to this because there's so much to it, but I'm out of curiosity. When the 2023 season kicks off, we know the scenarios whether, let's say, whether he starts or not, whatever, is Darnell King your 2023 Phoenix Rising captain? Does he get the armband? If he's a starter, yes, to me. Okay. If he's not, sure. then no. It's firm with it. Okay. And I, I think that that's... Now, of course, that's okay. with the caveat that um, I believe that Darnell's uh, wife is pregnant at the moment. He may well not be there for the first game. You never know. You never know with some of these things. Um... So that's the caveat, of course, that maybe he won't be this there for the first game. always covers his answers. He's a smart, um, he's a smart man. No. I always cover my answers. No. No, it's, it's, a, it's a good note of information. No, no, I no, uh, no on, on the real, that's, that's a very fair point. Well, okay, well, now, now I can't, I can't, tra I can't transition to that other than saying, I mean, oh, geez, that's a, that's a good point. See what I, see what I did there. Wow, pretty good as he rolls his eyes into eternity. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I got nothing other than it's going to be a long season ahead. Right, where are the OGs in there? I might need some. That's now. understandable. No, there's a, there's a long season ahead. And if you want to take the weight off the anticipation, if you can just wait for the season kickoff happen, the home opener, everything like that. Enjoy. No joke. April 1st. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. That is actually pretty crazy. Enjoy some delicious OGs from your favorite Scratch made Arizona's own THC cannabis kitchen. It's fantastic. They got all the different flavors. You know, got the strawberries and cream, the new CBD to THC one to one ratio, happy balance, all the same. Mike, get out of here. I saw him pull the comment. I was in the middle of an ad read. How dare you be smirched? The one thing that I love in this world is ad reads. That's what I do. Um, yes, they got the happy balance, strawberries and cream. They got the tropical, they got the pina colada. They got all kinds of stuff. They're going to be at Waste Management Open. WMO, we love all the things that OGs does. And well, look, after last season, trust me, the rising fans, especially the rising fans joining us yes. in this chat, they're all big fans of OGs. Oh, I'm glad. Well, okay. Listen. I, it was that kind of a year last year. Oh, we all know. Oh, dude, we, we all know. There are a couple of times after we finish our post game where it's like, well, I only lived I only lived 10, 15 minutes from Wild Horse Pass. I got home, took an OGs. Um, and then we went out for karaoke that one time. And uh, well, good thing there's not video of that. It does not exist. Anyway, that's a long segue to say it is official. Their strawberries and creams is actually now officially in the shelves. So as always, you can find them at your local dispensary. Check them out at ogsbrands.com to find a dispensary near you that carries them. And you must be 21 years or older to enjoy responsibly. And listen, a lot of new guys on this rising team, they might be the underdog in a lot of these oh, no. games. And That transition, really? Yeah. <laughs> that transition, really? Really, Max? And, well, if, if you might be barking up the wrong tree because if you want to be barking up the right tree, I'd use underdog fantasy. It is the easiest, funnest way to do daily fantasy sports. You can draft players on your team, go against your friends. You can do the pick em, which is what I do. Pick 
five players across a variety, a cornucopia, a plethora, a smorgasbord of sports. I am a great thesaurus. I know synonyms. You can do all those different types of things with all different players. Pick the higher or lower on a different player prop, and you can 20x your money. So let's say you put down $5, pick five players, all of their higher or lowers hit, you win $100. But, 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 but... For the Super Bowl, they're actually doing something pretty crazy. If you open up the Underdog Fantasy app, which I'm going to show there because you clearly saw that, Patrick Mahomes is featured for a payout booster. Higher or lower, 314 and a half total yards. You're a massive football buff. What do you think? Higher or lower? Absolutely right. So um, if if I'm going to do this, what we're going to do here is we need people to just track these. And if I somehow win, just utterly fluky guessing these, all right? Yeah, well, 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 you, know, you, you, we'll do you it. put the money down. You put the money down, and then we'll we'll split it if uh, you right. get half of it for no real effort. All right, actually, I'll take it. All right, all so right Pat, he's Patrick, doing it. Patrick Mahomes, I'm gonna go high, under. higher or low. You're going to lower. Go lower. Yeah, lower. let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we're going to go basketball. Anthony Edwards, you know, he plays for the Minnesota Timberwolves, 26 and a half points, higher or lower. Mm-hmm. Higher. Mm-hmm. Who are they playing, actually? Uh, they're <laughs> playing the Denver Nuggets. Take a shot at the DNVR, guys. Take a shot at the DNVR. I could, I could, but no. You know what? Actually, I'm going to change it. I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go lower. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Let's, you know what? We're going to switch over to, let's go switch over to, to switch over to soccer. Gio Reyna, the American prodigy, 1.5 shots attempted in the match tomorrow. Is that by his parents or by him? Oh, gosh. Oh, nice. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Um, Higher or lower, 1.5 shots attempted. Not on target. Attempted. Let's go higher. Okay, wow, we're going to the PGA Open. Oh, the Waste Management Open. We can do it all. John Rahm, ASU's own John Rahm. Oh, let's do 1.5 bogeys or worse. So bogey, double bogey, trickle bogey, higher or lower on Thursday. Let's go lower. Let's go lower. And, I mean, of course, you... Love your tennis. I mean, who who absolutely doesn't love your tennis? John Isner, let's go 19.5 aces, higher or lower. Lower. Let's go. So, <laughs> I'm just thinking <laughs> of random stuff here. Well, oh, let's man. go. Let's go. Come Dude, on. Let's that's go. That's crazy. So, normally with that, you do like, you get 20 t- extra money because you picked that Patrick Mahomes one. All those hit, you get 30 extra money. So I'm no mathematician, but five times 30, I think that's 150. So instead of 100, you get 150. Boom, only on Underdog Fantasy. And hey, you smash that using the app. Use the promo code PHNX and Underdog will double your first deposit or match your first deposit up to 100 smackaroonies. So you put down 100, they'll give you 100. You got 200, pretty easy. Easy to get started. Go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app. Use promo code PHNX. Also find it in the job in the wow job description. Holy heck, that is weird. Uh, in the show description, I'm like, Max, just, do you have any? <laughs> yeah, hey guys, nice seeing you. Wow, uh, and they'll match it up to one hundred dollars. Um, but yeah, check it out. Super fun. Owen's Owen and I are gonna make a bunch of money. Split one fifty down the middle, but I'm gonna take a finder's fee because it's my app. So yeah, um, follow along. Anyway, man, we run through a lot of we've stuff. We've got a lot of we've done a lot of stuff. We, we still have. got our big picture. I know. Like, yeah, we we had it with the state of the football club. This. Well, so what we, we want to do? What we what we want to do? And we're gonna keep track of this. But every first show of the month. This is technically our first show of the calendar month. It is February. You know, lots of things are going to ebb and flow throughout the season, but we want to kind of give a feel of like, hey, where is Rising going to finish? Is there anything like, what are we kind of feeling? Any predictions we want to throw out? It can be incredibly generic, it can be incredibly specific. But I think for this first one, that's nice generic. In, in terms of this first one, you only finished, darn it. And in terms of the first one, we want to go kind of like big picture, not anything too specific. We need to learn more about these players. So we want to figure out where is Rising going to finish? in this season purely purely based off of what we know and that's at this point there's a lot we need to know but on field what's a realistic table expectation not a wish not a worst case scenario where do you think they're gonna finish first round home playoff i think it's doable wow, i like I think that there's dude the i like you there was zero squad. hesitation in this man no, I, I genuinely okay. think the talent is okay. there the question is look do they uh ultimately 
get to the end of the the season having really bonded well together, having you know managed to put together a decent game plan. That's going to fall over. Don't put that on there, Max, please. As he puts a bottle on the, the barge. Can. Sorry, um, didn't really work. Um, <sighs> I feel as though a home playoff game is a genuine, yeah. genuine target for this team. I don't think it's a stretch target. I think it's a real target. Um, I think that it would be a best case scenario if you're talking about a. Uh, battling for the top seed in in the West, but I think that a home playoff game in the first round is very very achievable. Um, and, and again, I just feel as though the talent is there. The talent is there in this team. Um, some of them coming from other USL teams have shown that they're perfectly capable of those teams. Others have gone from coming from higher levels. Um, there's a nice mix here. I sure. genuinely think that a home playoff, and the chat seems to agree in general here that a uh, you know Michael okay. Pat. It probably depends on the first right. two months if they gel right away. I, I get it, but I think there's still a lot of, enough time to recover if, if you're a little bit slow off the off the bat there, Pat. Um, I, I genuinely think home playoff is, is currently where the team, the middle of the road estimate going forward. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one. I I don't think that's unreasonable. It's interesting. I mean, I think it really does depend, right? We kind of, when we looked at the schedule a couple of weeks ago, there are all, it's a very tough stretch in the first month. Then there's, you know, kind of not evens out, but then you get a couple stretch of home games, kind of find your footing, but it's really, it's that first stretch in the first month. And then it's that second to last month of it is a slog, man. You are playing a ton of heavyweights. So I'm really curious where this team gels. I mean, hopefully by then they have a lot more cohesion. It's a long-winded way of saying, I think that's doable. I'm going to maybe be, I don't know if you call it realistic or maybe a bit more pessimistic, whatever. I'll say they make playoffs. How like, am I the optimistic one here? I know, I know. That's, that's, a, that's, a, no, that's an issue we're going to have to unpack after the show. That's a, we're, we're in bad straits if that's happening. But um, I'm going to say I'm gonna say that they make playoffs for sure, but it is an away. It's an away game. I don't think they, I don't think they clinch home. I think that there's a lot of rounding in this form this team has to Who do. Who finishes above them? Hmm. Oh man. Well, this well, this, <laughs> wasn't, well, this wasn't part of it. No, I mean, I I think that's something where may, teams that maybe have a bit more continuity and maybe have a bit of taste of playoffs last year. There's a lot like of who? overhaul. There's a lot of overhaul. Like things. who, dude? I mean, oh. name me four teams. Name me four teams in the West that are going to finish above Phoenix Rising this year. Okay, San Antonio. All right. Hmm. Sacramento. Mm. <laughs> yeah, now you actually got to make me think about it. I, I, I'm not open cup, open cup winners. That's fair. No, no, no. That's it's it's that's a fair shout. Um, give me. Oh, dude, I don't want to say. I'm gonna get booed by the chat. Of course you are. Yeah, do it. Tell them. Go on. Say it with your whole chest, Max. You want to say it? Say it with your whole chest. Uh, so, so wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, really, mm. really. Really, he did. did it, Michael. He did it. I did. He and said him. To be fair, to be fair, Landon Donovan's moved upstairs, so <laughs> maybe we'll see what kind of an impact. I that mean, has. I know, I know, and also, I think it's probably for the positive. It's over probably there. for the positive. Yeah. And oh, okay. dude, I I think they're kind of fluky. I'm curious. Dude, give me the screw, man. Give me the switchbacks again. Really? The switchbacks again? Yeah. There's four. Mm. There's four. And listen, someone could surprise me in there, but. Uh, again, this is not a diamond on... Yes, I know. I get booed. That's fine. Amplify the booze. Amplify the booze. Put them on screen. That's fine. I'm not saying this is not a dig on the team. They'll make the playoffs. That's We said going into it, that's a bare minimum expectation is making playoffs. And they'll do that. I think they'll do that relatively easily. But I think if you're talking to get to be the upper echelon after all the turnover that's happening, it's hard enough to make the top four. We saw that the West was... Con, was other outside of the top seed was congested as hell in between two through six last season. It's going to be tough. It's doable, but I think realistically they're going to finish. Give me five. Like they'll finish right outside top four. Give me fifth. Give me fifth. Okay. Give me fifth. So yeah. I made you name four teams. You struggled to do that. And hence you go, well, they'd be fifth. Then. Yeah, yeah, you know, well, now you made me think about it. I got to use right. my brain. All right. All right. Well, well, that's on field. How about off field? What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? This isn't really something Good where I, I'm not really, I'm not really asking you for like attendance numbers, but like, what do you think the the vibe is compared to last season? I, I know it's different, but yeah. But well, if they're battling for a home yeah, playoff game, inherently <laughs> better just as a result. Yeah. Um, I get the feeling, and I, I, I'll say this. I, I like the idea of what the crowd might look like this yeah. year. I think that some of the 
um for, for better or worse the people who show up to games sit on their behind all game and do nothing mm. um are the people who are complaining about the new stadium location and not liking yeah. it in which case I, I mean the atmosphere will improve i don't know what you want um i, I just feel as though the atmosphere will improve in that case look i feel as though there's definitely energy about this move i feel as though it's something that a lot of people are excited about um I, i'm excited to see it come out I, i'm excited as well to see the team ultimately get it it's opportunity on some of the television networks that have uh, picked up the games of course the games on arizona family this year um one of which will be on channel five mm -hmm. um a few of the other games will be on channel three so they they're in a bigger shop window um in terms of showing them out and again multiple sources again suggesting that look the spm plus deal is likely to come back for the league-wide deal, um, which does, of course, there aren't blackouts or have not historically been blackouts on local broadcasts. So if you're struggling with the, the TV, you know, getting the TV games here, then that's fine. You can you can always go via ESPN+. Plus. Look, I, I feel as though it's going to be a good year for growth, especially if the performance on the field is good. Um, although it'll be in part, I think, contingent on how well the performance is on the field as to how sustainable it is. I think they'll hit the ground running at the start of the year with the good vibes around the team. Whether they keep that going to me is about how they do on the field. Okay. I like that. No, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I think the change of scenery is going to be awesome. The fact that, I mean, it's like as simple as like they're actually Phoenix Rising. They're playing in Phoenix. I think that's cool. I love the- It's in the name. It is. It is in the name. I love the proximity- to downtown, to Mill. I mean, Valley Metro, they're plugging them heavy um, with the partnership there. You have, you know, the who knows what the game day, the pregame experience is going to be, but it just opens up a lot of different opportunities where I think the fact that these two have been courting each other, Phoenix Rising and the the um, land out there, so to speak, it's really, really fascinating. So that for this to actually come together and see it after all the anticipation, after all the city council meetings, everything like that, Really, really cool, and I think people are going to be buzzing. I mean, listen, you're not going. To, we said when this got passed, it's not going to please everyone, but the people who are excited, I agree, pumped to it. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, listen, we said we said play, place on the table. We said game day atmosphere. Anything else we missed? Uh, no, that's about it. I think so. Um, yeah, but of course, there's a lot of games coming up. Yeah. The home opener, as you mentioned, mm. April the first. Oh yeah. April, no, no, no April Fools there. No, 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 mm. no joke there. No joke, I believe, is the uh, phrase. Mm. And how are how are you how are you going to be a well? Let's I mean, well, let's I'm going to be I'm going to be on a credential. You know I mean? man. Like, I said if you didn't have if you, God, man, never, never lets me finish. If you didn't have a credential, if your name wasn't Owen Evans, how would you be getting to the game, good sir? Well, I hear they do sell the tickets on the Game Time app. Ooh, the Game Time app. I like that. Well. Hey, if you want to get tickets to the upcoming rising season, if you don't have season tickets, if you burned your season tickets for whatever reason, if certain someone said a certain something that you didn't like, I don't know. But hey, if you don't like that, you can go to the Game Time app, save up to 60% on tickets when you buy them last minute through the Game Time app. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in our description. That's in the link in the podcast, link in the YouTube, link in all that stuff. So please use that. It's going to be awesome and super easy to enjoy a game. Their tickets sometimes going for as low as like legitimately we saw them for $4 last season. Granted, that's after the team took a bit of a nosedive, but even still, they were like last minute tickets for $4. Like you can't find that everywhere. And that's all in pricing. That's not the taxes, not the fees, not none of that stuff. $4. Bam. I'm not saying they will be $4, but take a look. And speaking of taking a look... You know, you're going to be looking pretty good, and dare I say, bad, when you're wearing some <laughs> bad birdie heads and so, baby. No, they just dropped some si six new polos, three new quarter zips. They are coming. Uh, the sigh is audible in this one. They are coming out with, ooh, and a little ASMR beer swig that you can't see because the graphic's up. But they are um, actually doing some waste management open collaborative stuff where it's purely for, like, Arizona-inspired this tournament, it's going to be rollicking on Saturday. I'm going to be in my bad birdie. Um, Derek Montilla on our D-backs podcast calls it a tuxedo where you're wearing the same top as you are the bottom. It's not a romper. It is two different pieces, but they look the same. I'm going to be wearing that with my bad birdie hat. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be nice and sunny. I'm going to be frolicking. I said frolicking. I know what I said. It's going to look amazing. And if you want to look as amazing, 
He put it on the screen, Mr. Producer Man. He used code PHNX underscore sports 15. Mr. 15. Producer Man. He doesn't have a name. I know. Yeah. Damon's a nice Hi, guy. Hi, Damon. Yeah. yeah. Yes, there I we know. go. He has a name. He, I know his name. Yes. For 15% off your <laughs> next order at badbirdygolf.com. Sometimes I like to mix up, say Mr. Producer Man, Mr. Co-host Man. I do what I do. Um, that's really everything I think we covered. Oh, there is one thing. Well, you know, um, how did the how did the poll go in uh, bottles versus cans? I think it was about two thirds to bottles, if I'm not mistaken, ah. roughly around that yeah, point. Yeah, um, yeah. No, there is okay. one more thing okay. that we need to do here, oh, which yes. is that uh, for next week's show and, and here on out, I'd like to introduce to you a brand new segment we're oh, going no. to have oh, no. each and every week. Don't so like if you want to get involved in this segment, all you have to do, it's very simple. Like Go this. on Twitter, no. find me. You can find me at Don't OJ Evans. One eight, okay. It. At OJ Evans one eight. Like I want you to hit on the little DM, nope, and I want you it. to send me a picture of what cheese Max nope, is this don't week. Don't do it. I'm a so Max is incredibly cheesy, is as we know. It's we need to do Max as cheese. cheeses. Okay. You won't. You won't. No. If I, this will be a new you, segment. Which cheese is Max this if week? If you want anyone to do anything, it takes two words, especially for us males out there, to motivate us males, and it's the two words. You won't. Because I bet you will, but you won't. I don't know, that's all I got. Send man. them in, please. That's all Send I got. Them in. Do you, it. You know what it is? Do on it. Tuesday morning, I'll make the pick as to which one it is. And there we go. Max will be. Call me Cheese because I'm the whole of the week. dang wheel, baby. And on that note, we're going <laughs> to. What? Cheese wheel. Right, we're going to end, we're gonna end this. Out. We're going to end this. He's, he's about to walk off set. But for me, you can find me at Max David Simpson. You can find him. He just said his user handle. I'm not going to say it again on Twitter because I don't want to give him the plug. OJ Evans 18. Just, just, gosh darn it. Just, you shouldn't have said it. Anyway. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. We will see you guys next week. Thank you.